The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today, I'm near St. Thomas, Ontario, talking with Patrick Butters from Butters Farms. Sir, how are you doing? Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, doing pretty good. Can't complain. Everything's going good. Sun's shining mm-hmm. and it's not raining again, so and, we're good. And we, we've got a great conversation to have about this spray tender, this trailer right here that you use in your operation. Going to go through this, going to walk around it. You know, it really is a customized trailer, Patrick, and it's really built for your operation, for your farm. So let's start there. Tell us about yeah. the operation. Yeah, so we are a cash crop operation here in southwestern Ontario, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, so we do grow your normal corn, beans, wheat, that's uh, pretty common around here. Uh, and then I guess the niche market that we're into that, uh, that will be different for a lot of people is we grow a lot of pumpkin gourds and ornamental corn, so all for Halloween and Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, then we do do some processing crops, some squash and sweet corn as well. Um, so fairly diverse from a, from a cropping standpoint. But yeah, that's what keeps us busy, yeah. busy around here. So. And that's going to really dictate what's on this trailer and how you built it. You know, talk about, I guess, what you need from this trailer to service all those, those different commodities and all that different business. Yeah, for sure. So a big thing for us is uh, having water. Um, we need to have a ton, of, a ton of water on the trailer because we are spraying a ton of fungicide throughout the season with all the veg crops. Um, so I think over the life of our sprayer, we're running around 18 gallons an acre um, on average. So a ton of work at 20 and 30 gallons, especially right. throughout the summer. Uh, so we, we burn through a ton of water. Yeah. So yeah, that that's super important to us. Um, and that being said, fungicides aren't typically in tote, so we deal with a ton of, a ton of jugs. So it's definitely designed uh, more to have a guy on the trailer cut and mix and clean and clean jugs um, so that the next batch is ready for, for when the sprayer rolls up again to get him filled and, and off to the races uh, back in the field spraying. So let's talk about how this came together. Um, a lot of welding, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of fabrication. You guys are pretty handy. Um, and this is actually a lot of parts from a previous trailers, right? For sure. I think like most people spray trailers, uh, you're on version 6, 7, or 8. I don't even know anymore. But yeah, every year you seem to tinker with something, but this is the latest one that we've that we've come up with and been using it like this for, for two years now. I'm quite, quite happy with the way uh, it's come together. So, But yes, no, uh, everything we kind of custom fabbed up ourselves, got some great guys in the shop that uh, when you kind of start out with a little drawing on the floor and some chalk and uh, it turns into what we got behind us. So it's it's been fun and adjusting and playing all the time, that's for sure. Hey, so let's do a walk around and see what you've gotten up to, uh, as I say, what you've customized here and how it's come together. Sounds good, let's do it. The first thing I really want to uh, talk about, super simple, but not everybody always thinks of it. Uh, these used to be clear. So we went and painted them black because we got sick of pressure washing the inside out midsummer when they'd start growing algae. Um, something super simple uh, that has made life a whole lot easier come the middle of the season when the sun's at its brightest and, and you're fighting, fighting with that growth in your tanks. So um, Something that we are going to try to figure out as a, as, uh, for next year will be our sight tubes. That's the one part that's still clear, but as you can see now, after a year, all the growth that's happened in them. So we want to try to figure something out better for that. Uh, just to make life easier for seeing how much water you still got left in your tanks. So like I said uh, earlier there, this is version who knows how many of the of our spray trailer. So we've we're kind of reused and repurposed stuff along the ways. Um, one of them being our tanks, all the outlets are off the ends of them. They aren't the full self-draining tank with the center sump in it. Um, so that being said, You'll see how our our plumbing has to come out of the end, but then on previous trailers, we left the plumbing on the deck and you were stumbling over top of it the whole time, uh, working around it, bit of a trip hazard, simple thing. We just cut cut holes in the deck, dropped all our plumbing underneath so that we could uh, just have a safer, cleaner, tidier work area for when we are cleaning and mixing um, up the next next batch of chemical. Other kind of super simple thing that we did added additional lights on the trailer uh, for when we're working at night. So just to kind of blow up our work area again, just make it easier for everybody to see see what's going on. Um, just little things like that that kind of make it easier for the operator on the trailer to to safely do do his job. So um, 
And because we are so heavy on jugs, that leads me kind of into why we built the compartments the way we did. Uh, so the front one here, extra tall, this really is where we focus on keeping all of our skids of uh, jugged chemical. Uh, we wanted to make it easy that you could just quickly open the doors, set a skid of chemical in there, close the door, and it's safe to go down the road. We're not worried about jugs falling off or anything like that. So just into your, into your um, compartments and, and away you go. Um, this side here, we put the extra floor in it and that's just so we know, hey, you got a part jug left over, it goes up there, makes it easy, you know what's what and where it's at. Um, for when you're trying to finish out a batch, if you only need a part jug, you check there first before you open another one, so. So because we are so heavy on, on jugs, uh, we do keep a guy on the trailer all day long, uh, moving from field to field, and so he'll be there mixing up the next batch as the sprayer's finishing up the job he's on, so that when he gets there, he's ready to load, get filled right away, and back going. Um, that being said, we've got two cam handlers on here. Both have the knife inside. Just makes life easy when it comes to slicing open your jugs. Then you can rinse them, give them one final rinse off the garden hose just to, to make sure you kind of get into the corners. Um, and then that also allows us, if you've got a couple different chemistries that don't play nice together, we can keep them separate until they are heading down the water stream and into, into the sprayer to be sprayed out. So you don't end up with a bunch of sludge in here while you're waiting for the, uh, for the sprayer to show up. Um, other simple thing, as we talked about earlier, a bit of how the plumbing, we've buried it all underneath to keep it safe and easy to walk up here. We just kind of kept it simple. You got a valve for the front tank and a valve for the back tank. You can have one or both open, um, depending on where you want to pull your water from. And then it flows through to our pump, which then feeds through to pressurize underneath here as you're trying to suck, suck water out through the venturis on the bottom of the chem handlers. Um, so the back compartment, when we built it, this was kind of where we always knew we would put, put our totes. We kind of designated that for that. But we did also keep it open in that front compartment that if you do need extra tote space, we can put it up there if we're not spraying a bunch of jugs that day. Um, just uh, tried to keep it clean and tidy by putting some hooks on for our pumps. Uh, and again, because we haven't done, or we don't spray a ton of chemical through totes, we haven't gone any farther than using the, the chem pumps to meter out the chemical. Uh, at that point, uh, it works for us now. Um, and again, with having somebody on the trailer mixing the batches up ahead of time, that being a little slower than, than maybe a, grab, uh, a venturi system on there, metering it out, uh, it works for us today. So um, we did keep that bottom compartment open there so that when we finished emptying uh, cases of chemical, the empties, we just fire them in there, they can sit safely there you're not putting them back on top of um, unopened cases dripping water and everything on them so we can kind of keep our mess back there so then when we're back at the farm filling full of water again open the side door pull your empty cases out and you're good to get going again all right so the next piece i guess we should talk about um you see lots of trailers that they either have the, the arm on the side of them for holding your hose as you're hooking into your sprayer uh, or, or hose reel. We decided hose reel because that gave us the ability, if we needed to, to be able to feed under the trailer over to the far side if, uh, if we have to fill off, off the back side of the trailer, um, depending on the farm we're at. So same thing. Uh, what we kind of really liked with the hose reel is you don't have to be perfect distance away from, from the sprayer with the trailer. You can just keep running it out until you're, you're at the distance you want to hook up and you're filling. Nice feature with this one that we did, it is all on a remote, so one guy can easily kind of grab it and run the line out and then back back in again afterwards to, uh, to tidy it up without really reefing on anything and, and pulling hard. So, um, And then I guess another little thing that we did, soap and water right here. Last thing we do when you're done, before you take off and head to the uh, to the next field, pack your line up, right? So then we got water right there. 
easy to clean, rinse your hands off, and, uh, and, and then you're ready to hit the road and move on to the next field.